Shalom Yashral, and welcome to another video here from the um, Israel Awake uh, YouTube channel. So Yashral, Israel, Shalom, peace. Um, the focus on, of today's video is to look at one specific holy day. Seven holy days are commanded. Right? It's the one of the commandments of the Most High God of Israel. To find a like a good summary of the seven holy days, you will find them listed in the 23rd chapter of the book of Leviticus. Okay, so they start with the first annual holy day, which is the Passover. Of course, we have our weekly Shabbats, the weekly Sabbaths. But in terms of the annual holy days, there are there are seven ones, uh, starting with Passover and ending with the Feast of Booths. Um, also known as the Feast of Tabernacles, because a tabernacle is a booth. So each holy day, and I've done videos on this, if, uh, for those of you who haven't explored this, this channel, but each holy day has a meaning in and of itself. But put together, gives us the whole blueprint. When you bring all seven annual holy days together, it gives us the blueprint of Yahweh's master plan of salvation. Okay, so it's something to know. It's one of the reasons why we were commanded to keep them in the first place. It's why Yahweh kept them. It's why the apostles kept them. It's why we're still expected to keep them today, um, contrary to some people's opinion. All right. Uh, and I know I've done videos on that. Um, for those of you who are interested, I will be giving details, uh, you know, at the end of this video, or, or perhaps how you can contact us here at Israel Awake. All right. But the holy day that I want to focus on is the one that sits in the middle, all right, which is the Feast of Weeks, okay, um, probably, well, better known as the, the Day of Pentecost uh, to most, all right, so the Day of Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks, okay, as I say, it sits in the middle uh, in terms of the holy calendar of holy days, so preceded by Passover, uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread, Feast of First Fruits, yeah, and then followed after Pentecost, followed by the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and as I say, the uh, grand finale, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, representing the, the kingdom of God on earth, the kingdom of Elohim on earth. All right. So, but for today, we want to focus on the Day of Pentecost. What's it all about? There's a lot of symbolism in there as well. A lot of, you know, in the, in the Old Testament times, a lot of um, ceremony. Um, and then we find the, uh, if you like, New Testament fulfillment, as some would put it. All right. What's that all about? What's going on? And what do we need to know as the reawakened children of Israel? What do we need to know uh, about, the, about this uh, holy day? OK, so that's the focus. That's what I'm going to be looking at. All right. So um, just get comfortable. All right. Uh, and join me on this uh, journey of discovery, okay, as, as, as we look into this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just uh, attempting to share my screen, all right? Um, so bear with me one moment, because the computer seems a little bit on the slow side with this, so just bear with me as I get this up on screen, because um, it's always important that we look at the scriptures and we bring the scriptures out regarding these things, all right? So um, hopefully you should be able to now see that on screen, okay? So we're gonna go straight to Leviticus chapter 23, okay? As I say, that's where the holy days, including the weekly Sabbath, um, are mentioned as well, all right? So for today's video, let's go straight down to verse 15. So Leviticus 23, verse 15, reading from the King James throughout. All right. Verse 15. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering. So that's the feast of first fruits. Yeah, the, the first fruits of the month of Abib. OK, uh, sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number 50 days and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of the two tenth deals. They shall be of the fine flour. 
they shall be bacon with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. Yeah, first fruits of this particular harvest here around um, Pentecost time. Verse 18, and ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year, and one young bullock and two rams. They shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord with their meat offering and their drink offerings, even an offering made by fire of sweet savour unto the Lord. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go, go down to verse 21. Verse 21. And ye shall proclaim on the self same day that it may be an holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. Okay. This is the feast of weeks. Okay. The, otherwise known as the day of Pentecost. Okay. Just quickly then to touch on these names. Feast of weeks. Well, that term's pretty much come because you're counting weeks. Yeah. Going back to verse 15. All right. So you just, yep. Yeah. So you're starting an account from the feast of first fruits. Okay. So you've got the Passover. The Passover, yeah, which is the 14th of Abib, which is followed by the high day, um, holy day of the, the feast of unleavened bread, if you like, the first full day of the feast of unleavened bread. All right. That's on the 15th of Abib. And then on the 16th of Abib, following, yeah. The, the 15th, the 15th being um, a, a, a Shabbat. Yeah, and following that on the 16th is, the, is the, the wave offering for the Feast of First Fruits. Okay, so from then, that's when you count, and ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Shabbat. So after the 15th, that would have been the 15th of Abib, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering. Yeah, um, that was, that's what happens on the morrow after the, the Shabbat. So yeah, in Abib. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Yeah. So seven Sabbaths is seven weeks. Okay. Seven weeks. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath. So it's seven Sabbaths. Yeah. And then the day after the seventh Sabbath. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number 50 days. Uh, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Now, there's a whole message uh, really warranted here just for the calculation alone. The reason why I say that is because there's different interpretations as to what that means, all right? Um, I can tell you in the past, I've been involved with a congregation whereby uh, we um, interpreted that to mean you, you, did your, you count your seven Sabbaths, and then after the seventh Sabbath, yeah, so even onto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, you shall ye number 50 days. So we counted an additional 50 days after the seventh Sabbath. All right, thinking that was the way to do it. That's the way I was taught when I was younger. Yeah, that, that was the way to go about it. Um, I've, you know, I've since um, learnt, yeah, and the Father's laid it on my heart and shown me uh, scripture and, and, and gave, given me understanding to realise that actually, uh, no, the, the, the correct way to do it is seven Sabbaths plus the, the, the day after is your count. You don't add an additional 50 days. All right, because in actual fact, um, and what throws people is that word even. Really, if you look in the, um, in, in the, in the scriptures, the word even is, is used very similar to how we use the word indeed. So even unto the morrow is indeed unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath. And there's many scriptures to show that. As I say, that's a, that's a whole Bible study for like in and of itself. All right, but um, just to let people know right from the outset that no, you see seven weeks, yeah, seven Sabbaths, which is seven weeks, yeah, seven, so yeah, um, seven weeks of that is 49 days. Because seven times seven is 49. So when you count your seven weeks, your seven Sabbaths, it says even until tomorrow after the seventh Sabbath, yeah, um, after the seventh Sabbath, that's 49 days. And so the, the morrow after the seventh Sabbath is 50 days. And if there you complete your count, that's the 50 days. So that's why it's called the Feast of Weeks, um, in fact, it's the Feast of Weeks in the Old Testament, because it's, you're counting weeks, all right? Pentecost is literally, you see that term used in the New Testament, because as we know, the New Testament, for the most part, has found its way down to us through the ages, 
um, using the Greek, the Greek form, the Greek language, all right? Not originally in Greek, but it's come down to us in the Greek, all right? For historical reasons. So it's come down to us with the Greek. Now the Greek, the Greek, the ancient Greek for 50th is Pentecost. Pentecost. Pente, the root word Pente being your five, which, which that's why we got Pentagon. Yeah? Yeah, and Pentathlon. Yeah, all, re all relating to five. Yeah, Pentagon, a five-sided shape. Pentathlon, five sports activities. Yeah, and so on. All right. So um, Pentecost being 50th. So that's why the, you, you limit the count to 50. If we were counting seven weeks and then tomorrow after that counting uh, uh, another 50 days, actually you're closer to more to 100. It wouldn't be called Pentecost. Pentecost doesn't mean 100 uh, or 99. It means 50. So the count is complete after seven weeks and then tomorrow after the seventh Sabbath, just as it says in the scriptures. All right. So anyway, I don't want to label the point too much, but I think it's important. Because if we're talking about keeping the Pentecost, then we need to know when it falls. All right. So. Um, so many much, so much scriptures to look into there, but um, we see then, right, that it is again. You can see harvest, just like with the feast of wheat, right? Um, in the month of Abib, we see um, harvest. Yeah, um, we see um, you shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenth deals. Right, it's relating to a harvest as well. All right, now this is important. Because what precedes a harvest? Well, it's the rains. Rain season, rain in due season. No rain in due season, no harvest. All right, so it's intricately linked. The blessing of rain is intricately linked to the blessing of the, of the, the harvest. Because the harvest is a product of the blessing of the rains. Now, this is very important. Because you find rains, uh, you know, the water rain from the father's clouds, right? You find this uh, a great symbolism in the scriptures, okay? And we're going to get some of that, all right? So we see here, a, um, you know, the uh, harvest, okay? Now, this is important. And we're going to come on to see um, just how important it really is, okay? Because we learn of another harvest. Bearing in mind that oh, oh, <laughs> everything in the in the Old Testament was pointing towards Yahushua Mashiach, ultimately, yeah, a shadow of what was to be fulfilled through him. All right. For example, he is the ultimate Passover Lamb. That's why he was the ultimate sacrifice for Yeshua. Okay. So in the same way, all right, when we're talking about harvest, it's a picture of, of what was to come. Right. So we, we we get a sense of harvest of souls. Let's let's go there. Let's have a look at that. Uh, let's go over to Matthew, Matthew chapter 9, and I'm going to scroll down to verse 36. Bear with me. Scrolling down to verse 36. Okay, but I'll start from verse 35 just for context. So, verse 35, and Jesus, how was I? And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Yeah, uh, so the gospel is about the kingdom, the good news, the good tidings about the kingdom and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, you see how I speaking now, the harvest. Truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Now, let's be mindful. Our father doesn't do coincidence. Yahweh Shai, the son, doesn't do coincidence. The Messiah doesn't do coincidence. Hamashiach doesn't do coincidence because of wisdom. All right. It's not by chance that such language is being used. All right. There's always a deeper meaning behind what's being said. All right. So we see here that there's reference to a harvest of souls, basically. All right. A harvest of souls, um, which, which need to be brought in. Right? Very powerful point. OK. Um, 
And also, we're going to see how the rains, remember I was saying the rains precede a harvest, okay? And we're going to find that, off the, that the rain, the rain in due season is also a picture, a similitude, yeah, of the uh, outpouring of the Holy Spirit. All right. Um, let's get that in scripture. All right. There's a few places we can go, quite a few. But um, I'm inspired to go to the book of Acts. So let's go to Acts chapter one. So the very first chapter of the book of Acts. And let's go to verse five. Okay. So thank you for that. Let's go okay. Acts chapter one, verse five. For John, that's being John the Baptist, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So we see how water was a precursor. Yeah? John the Baptist brought a baptism of water. All right? But then the actual fulfillment of that would, have, would be the not the outpouring of water, yeah? but of the Holy Spirit, yeah? So showing you the, 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 the intertwining, yeah? And the interconnection between the two uh, symbols, if you like, of water and spirit, yeah? Of these two phenomenon, if you like, all right? So we see that, yeah? So let's get more of a sense of that from the scriptures, more of a sense of this, this usage, yeah? Um, of, of, of water and spirit and the rains and spirit. Yeah, because it's it's important to get to, to understand these similitudes in order to understand um, prophecies, to understand what the prophets were saying. Prophets like Isaiah and Joel, which we're going to come on to. So, in fact, let's just get that. All right, let's um, go to the prophet Hosea, because this principle is made very clear in the book of, of Hosea. So, let's go to the prophet Hosea. All right, let's go to chapter twelve and over to verse ten. Okay, let's get that up on the screen. Okay, so is Hosea 12 and verse 10 on screen. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Yeah, so similitudes are, are like symbols, um, you know, um, analogies. Yeah, something similar, a similar meaning, all right, a similitude. Yeah, so prophets often speak using similitudes as inspired by the Mosai. All right, so one of these similitudes is rain. Yeah, and it's a similitude often for the Holy Spirit. So let's get that there. Now that we've got this principle, this, yeah, into understanding prophecy. Let's get some of this then. Let's get some of this prophecy. Uh, let's go to Isaiah, one of the major prophets, one of our major prophets of old. Isaiah chapter 44. Okay, and let's go over to verse three. Let's really get this out, Israel. All right. So Isaiah chapter 44 and verse three. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. Look at that language. Look at the language there, brothers and sisters. Look at it. Yeah. Look how, how, how it's being used. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. And then without a break, I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. See? And my blessing upon thine offspring. So in the same way, that the, I pour water, yeah, basically on the seeds that are in the ground, and we get that physical harvest, we get the similitude, that you know, the pouring of his spirit onto the seed being your offspring. Yeah, it's the same dynamics, it's the same principle at work, yeah? And um, that's why these, these similitudes work so well, right? They work so well. So with that in mind, let's go over to another prophet. Let's go over to Joel, right? So moving over to the book of Joel, okay, um, let's go to the, let's go to the second chapter, all right? So book of Joel, second chapter. Let's go down, I want to, again, let's look at some of the language being used here and how it's used. 
So let's go to start with verse 23. Yeah, verse 23. All right. I'm going to do verses 23 and then drop down to verses 28 and 29. All right. So verse 23. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. All right. So very clear, speaking about the rains and the rains as a blessing from Yahweh. You can see that quite clearly, all right? So, um, and, and you know what? I'm going to, I mentioned the key verses I'm going to get to, but you know what? As the spirit leads, let me just keep going here. Verse 24, and the floors shall be full of wheat. You see that? Rains, then the harvest. That makes sense. That's the, that's the process, all right? No rains, you often get drought and then famine, all right? So verse 24, and the floors shall be full of wheat. And the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you for the disobedience. Verse 26, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Is that plenty satisfaction is a blessing. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord of Yahweh, your Elohim, um, that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. In verse 28. And it shall come. So yep, we've got the rains. We've got the harvest. The blessing. Verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Verse 29. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Yeah. Do you see that? Where does talk of the rains? There is talk of the harvest. Where there is talk of the rains and the harvest, there is talk of the outpouring of the Father's Spirit. This is a similitude. The rains in these prophecies are the similitude with the Holy Spirit. All right. So this is so important. This is so important. So we see here that the Father had said, I'm going to pour out my Spirit. On you all, yeah, a major outpouring. It wasn't that the ones and twos had, had you know, abided with the Holy Spirit, um, yeah, but didn't necessarily have the full output, the full outpouring hadn't come. All right, a select chosen few had, 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 you know, had worked with the Spirit, the Spirit worked with them, but now we're talking about the indwelling presence, a real outpouring, all right, which is actually a part of the new covenant, okay. Uh, and I'm aware there's people who have different views on that. Uh, but for those of you, just 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 bear with me on this video. Just bear with us on this video. All right. Um, and like I say, at the end, if anybody's got any questions or anything that you want to talk about or discuss, um, then, you know, happy to do that. All right. So it's, we can see it quite clear, that link. Yeah, I think everybody can be agreed on that. All right. So we see here. Joel talking about the outpouring of rain and then how that's um, basically culminates in the outpouring of the Father's Spirit. Now, Peter, one of the elder, yeah, one of the, the elders of the church, in, in, in um, yeah, that upon which Yahweh said he would build his church, his, his assembly, his yeah, his group of people. All right, he saw that that connection. Yeah, he made that connection. Because you see, the fulfillment of this prophecy, yeah, is the, was the 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 day of Pentecost recorded in Acts chapter two. That's yeah, Israel has been observing the Feast of Weeks for, for centuries before before Acts two, but something very special happened on that particular Pentecost because it was the fulfillment of what Yahweh had said when he said, "I'm going to come and pour out, you know, I'm going to send a Comforter, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost." I'm going to send it. All right. 
So let's get that, shall we? All right. We're going to see um, that Peter was very clear what was going on in Acts chapter two. He knew it was the fulfillment of the words that we've just read here in um, the book of Joel. All right. So um, let me what I'll do is let me keep Joel up on this screen. All right. So it's Joel chapter two. Let's get back down and just like put a place marker there, basically. Yeah. So, yeah, let's stay there. Right. And let's go over to the book of Acts. So the book of Acts, uh, chapter two. Yeah. Um, so from Joel, chapter two to Acts, chapter two. That's very convenient. All right. Um, so Acts, chapter two. Let me read verses. Right. So Acts, chapter two. Anyway, you know what? Let's start from verse one, because this makes it clear that it's a day of Pentecost. Verse one. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Now, why were they all in? Why were these people all in one accord in one place? Because these were people who kept the Feast of Pentecost. Which is why we ought to be keeping it today, by the way. Can you imagine if anybody back then decided that for whatever reason they didn't want to keep the day of Pentecost? Anybody that should have been there who weren't there, did you, you see what they missed out on? That great outpouring, yeah? That was a, it, and it was a, because it was a monumental um, historical marker, yeah? It was, it was done in a very graphic way that's never been repeated since, all right? We have access to the Holy Spirit, but th th this form, this, this, this um, display and demonstration, if you like, of the outpouring has never been repeated since, all right? So let's get that, first one. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Here we go. That, that promise of pouring out the Holy Spirit. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, yet Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. That's very interesting because these people were out of every nation under heaven, but they were all Jews. So these were clearly those of a diaspora, those who had uh, left um, Israel, gone, gone to um, many nations for various reasons, yeah, but would now come back to Jerusalem, all right? Um, their Pentecost being one of those days that you would do that. All right, there, there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how, how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. Okay. Um, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of Elohim, of God. And they were all amazed and were, in, and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others mocking said, these men are full of wine. So some are saying, you know, they're, maybe they're tipsy, yeah? But Peter, standing up with the 11, lifted up his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, Yerushalam, be this known unto you and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day, yeah, which is um, um, nine o'clock in the morning, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Listen, brothers and sisters, Peter is explaining what's going on. And he's referring to what we just read in the book of Joel. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. 
And then he goes on to quote from the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Yeah, you see that? You see that? We just read that in Joel 2. I've kept it up. Remember with the place marker. There's Joel chapter 2. Yeah. Verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. 29. And, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And it actually goes on. Verse 30. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. Yeah, that was Joel chapter two. Yeah, um, Acts chapter two. Yeah, um, remember verse 18, and on my servants and on my handmaids, directly from Joel, I will pour out in those days my spirit and they shall prophesy. Verse 19, and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Yeah. The sun, verse 20, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. Yeah, and verse 21, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall come, shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah, um, ye men of Israel, hear these words. He's a, Peter clearly addressing Israel. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. Yeah, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Yeah, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. All right. So I'm going to pause there. Wonderful teachings in all of that, those, those scriptures. All right. But for the purposes of this video, we're focusing on the fact that Peter made that connection. He saw it. He, 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 the, the revelation came upon him. He could see that what was going on in this upper room was the fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel. And we saw in Joel, our, before we started talking about the outpouring of the Spirit, it was the similitude you used was the rains, the rains in due season. It's so important to get that. All right. So this Pentecost then, it's all about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, the fact that we, 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 we you know, we the Holy Spirit is available to those of us who um, return unto Yahweh and accept Yahweh Shai Hamashayat as Adawan. Which is Lord, that's other one. All right, because this is why you have a shy. You see, it's a spirit of power. We need power in these last days, you know, to endure unto the end that we may be saved, to overcome the the, the enemies, the you know, the enemy that's out there, Satan and all his minions, yeah, and the, and the powers and the principalities, yeah. And the rulers of the darkness of this world, as we learn in, yeah, in, in Ephesians 6. Yeah. So we're, we're told to be strong. Yeah. In, 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 in Elohim and in the power of his might. We're told to be too. We're going to come on to these scriptures. All right. So Yahweh Shai. So that's what we're celebrating. That's what we're observing. It's marking that. Right. It's understanding the Old Testament uh, perspective. But then bringing up the, and then the New Testament fulfillment of that, as we see Peter clearly making it clear, making the analogy, making the link between the, the you know Joel and what was occurring, as recorded in Acts chapter two. All right, so let's get there. Let's get the fact that Yahweh promised the Spirit. That's why. So this piece of Pentecost is a major time because it's us. It's for us to really um, mark it, to mark the fact that we. I can celebrate the, the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, which is um, also has yeah also showing us the, the the promise about the new covenant. 
Yeah, it's so important to, to get that link. All right, so let's go over and look at some of the places where Yahweh Shai promised the Holy Spirit. All right, so uh, let me go to this screen. Um, right, yeah, let's go to the book of John. So let me put John in there. Let's go to John chapter 14. Uh, let me start with verse. Uh, let's have a look. Right, let's just go to John chapter 14 because I think there's a few verses I want to look at there. So John chapter 14, okay, scrolling down to verse 16. Verse 16, yeah. Um, in fact, let's just start from verse 15, shall we? If you love me, keep my commandments. Love that because um, it's so clear that, you know, keeping the commandments is all about loving the most high. Yeah, um, and if you love the Most High, you will keep the commandments. If you love your Shai, you will keep his commandments. Bearing in mind that the commandments that Yahushai taught is the will of the Father, because Yahushai made it very clear that he never came to do his own will, but the will of his Father. All right, verse 16, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. See, so Yahushai always promised, he promised that he would ask for the comforter to be given. Right, this outpouring, yeah. Yahavashai was critical. There would be no up. The, the prophecy of Joel would never have been fulfilled without Yahavashai's intervention. Yahavashai is an integral part of the master plan of salvation, as we know. It is Yahavashai centric. All right. Um, let's scroll down to verse that was verse 16. Let's go down to verse 26. That's 26. But the comforter, which he promised which is the Holy Ghost, so make sure there's no confusion, yeah, whom the Father will send in my name, yeah, everything's done in his name, we, we ought to even ask things in his name, he shall teach you all things, and it's important, the Holy Spirit teaches us, teaches us all things, when it's ready, when the time's ready, and when, it, when we're ready to understand, but it teaches us all things, yeah, now this is important, because um, we're told that in the new covenant, all right, that um, that you will know things, you will know you will know all things, and no one will need to teach you. Well, we can see how that's how that works. It's all through the agency of the Holy Spirit. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So he'll teach us things and remind us of things. This is fantastic, Israel. This is fantastic. Yeah, why would you want to deny this? Why not embrace this? It's for our it's for our good. All right. So we see that um that, that this was promised. Let's go over now. It's chapter 14. Let's go over to uh chapter 15. Yeah, so John chapter 15. I'm um, going down now to verse 26. Verse 26. But when the comforter is come, and we know the comforter is the Holy Ghost from the previous verse. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth. So the comforter is the spirit of truth. Is, you see that word even? Yeah, indeed. Like I was saying earlier on, the use of the word even. Even the spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Yeah. So we see that again in uh, verse 26. Let's go to chapter 16 again. See that the fact that Yahushua always promised that he would send the Spirit. He had the outpouring as prophesied in the book of Joel. Yeah. So uh, John chapter 16, let's go down to verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For I, for if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. This is when Yahushua was explaining that, you know, he was going to have to be crucified and, and all the rest of it, all right? And then, and, then, and then leave them to go away, to go to the Father, all right? Um, afterwards as well. And um, he's having to explain to the Lord, I'm having to go. Because it would have been a, a, a sad time for those who knew him back then, who knew him personally back then, literally, in person, yeah? Incarnate, all right? It wasn't going to be sad to see him go away. He's explaining, yeah, to his people, look, look. I have to do this. If I don't go, I can't send you the comforter. I've got to go up and 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 and, and um you know and ask the father to send it to send the comforter onto you. So we see that, we see that 
right? And um, so we see that this is the Holy Spirit. It will teach us of things, remind us, and remind us of everything that Yahweh Shai had sent, right? Because the Spirit itself confesses Yahweh Shai. Yeah? This is all part and parcel of the Feast of Pentecost. Yeah? It's a wonderful holy day. They all are. Yeah? But we're focusing on Pentecost. So, yeah, let's um, really um, celebrate and observe the Feast of Pentecost in a way perhaps that we've never done before or with more vigor, with more yeah, with more determination, with more joy, you have more fulfillment, all right? So let's just get that about um, the Spirit confessing Yahweh Shai. Let's go to First John. Yeah, so First John, and uh, let me go to chapter four. So First John, chapter four, all right? Let's go to verse two. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, which is, of course, the Holy Spirit, Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God, right? Now, clearly, um, we know that be Yahweh Shaya Mashaya, right? As the scripture has said as well, because that's what Yahweh himself had said, all right? So it would have to, yeah, so not a false, not a false Jesus, yeah? Not, 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 and not um, a sort of Michelangelo's and Raphael's rendition, yeah, not the Renaissance version, yeah, but the true, um, biblically accurate um, definition of, of, of Yahweh Shai and what he taught and what he was all about, yeah. So uh, every spirit that confesses that Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh, is of God, all right. So we, we, we see that then. Let's go to verse 4. Ye are, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because great is he that is in you than he that is in the world all right so um Yahweh Shai had always promised to send the spirit we see that the spirit itself confessed that um Yahweh Shai has comes in has come yeah in that first incarnation um of, of the, that we see in the in the in the testament uh, the synoptic gospels as they're called all right um let's also see him now fulfilling that so let's go back to Acts let's see him fulfilling the outpouring of the spirit, which we which we looked at, yeah. So Acts, let's go back to Acts. So Acts, one second, yeah. Acts chapter two, all right. So let's get that. So Acts chapter two again. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. He told them where to go. Remember, when preceding that, he told them to go into the upper room, yeah, and to follow the the, the guy with the, with the with the jug of water, yeah. Um, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. This is now yeah, verse four, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. So we see this is the mass fulfilling of what Yahweh had always promised all along. All right. So it is something um, we should be keeping. All right. Um, the apostles kept it. It was never. It, it, there's no point in history where it was where where it was ever argued that you stopped keeping it. All right. And what's really interesting? Sometimes you get some, as we said, some ministries who do keep Pentecost. All right, but then don't keep the other holy days. It's amazing. You've got many who keep Pentecost, but don't keep the feast of first fruits. Not even marking it. I'm not saying, yeah, we're not in the Holy Land, so we don't necessarily. And we, it's, most of us don't live a sort of agrarian agrarian sort of background, you know, working off the land. And many of us don't can't relate to a harvest festival, all right? Granted, but it doesn't mean that you can't have a holy convocation and that you can't mark it, all right? And do what you can, all right? So, um, and we, should, we most certainly should do that, all right? Um, and anybody who's interested in that and would like to get involved with things like that, you know, please do get in contact. I'll give uh, contact details at the end, all right? But, um, you know, it's... Um, it's it was kept and we can see um scriptures in the new testament of it being kept right after christ has ascended for anybody who thinks that no there was no need to keep it after he has ascended um then actually no we see we find um that the, the disciples were continuing to keep it after his ascension yeah if i'm going to say something like that i need to back it up uh with scripture witnesses so let's do that all right let me go to one example let's go to the book of acts again uh, Acts chapter 20. So obviously this is the Acts of the Apostles. All right. 
So let's go to Acts 20, let's go to verse 16. Let's get some scriptural witnesses up here. Yeah, and rightly divide the word of truth. Here a little, there a little. Yeah, um, let's go. Acts chapter 20, verse 16. Yeah. Um, for Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he hasted, if it were possible for him, to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. Yeah, so we see records. Yeah, but Paul was still keeping the feast of weeks, the day of Pentecost. Yeah, um, and this is long after the ascension. All right, let's get another um, example of this. Let's go to First Corinthians. All right, um, one moment. I think I missed into something here. One moment. Okay, so First Corinthians. Okay, let what I want to check. Sixteen. Yeah, and uh, let's go to verse eight, yeah. All right, take a look. Um, first Corinthians 16, eight, but I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost, yeah, on screen, all right? So that's why, um, you know, study to show ourselves approved so that we don't miss, um, and man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of, of God, the mouth of Elohim, yeah? So um, it's... Uh, these, these, all these verses give, give clues to that, all right? Okay, so it's about the Holy Spirit, Israel, the day of Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks, weeks it's all about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which is also, by the way, synonymous with the new covenant. Now, I know I, have, I, know I have brothers and sisters who don't believe that we're in the new covenant. I know where you're coming from. I can see why you would say that, but you know, I'd welcome the opportunity to discuss that with you. All right. I, 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 yeah, it's, it, this um, Bible study would be very long to really go into all of that. Uh, perhaps need a separate video. Yeah, something, um, something uh, perhaps to look into, uh, and most certainly welcome any any dialogue with anyone uh, on that. All right, but it is part and parcel the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, as we've read. All right, and as what took place, the event recorded in Acts chapter two, yeah, it was if you like that was a that that was a that was a ignition, yeah, and with with with, with the effects of which we're still we're still feeling now, yeah, the Holy Spirit, yeah, has come down and is still moving into um, God's people, yeah, who re were returning unto Him through Yahweh Shaya Mashiach. All right. So um, that was a great milestone, you know, approximately circa 2000 years ago when the spirit came down in that form. Um, and we're still benefiting from that to this very day for those of us returning onto Yahweh, yeah, through Yahweh Shai, right? So important to get this, so important to get this, all right? So it's all about spirit. Why be interested in the spirit? Well, there's many reasons why we need to be interested in this, all right? Because God himself is spirit. That's why we need the Holy Spirit, yeah? If we're gonna worship him in spirit, yeah, you can't worship him in spirit, you can't do anything in spirit if you don't have the spirit, all right? All praises, it really is, it really is that simple, all right? Um, let's get some of that, all right? Um, let's go to the gospel according to John. So John, let's go to chapter four, yeah? And let's go to verse 24. Let's get on the screen. Okay, simple and plain on screen. God is a spirit. Yes, Allah is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is why we should be um, interested in matters pertaining to the um, Kwadash Raka. Yeah, or Raka Kwadash. Yeah, this is why. All right, because God is himself his spirit and the Holy Spirit is his spirit that he shares with us so that we become like him. Yeah, more of him, less of the flesh. Yeah, all praises, all right. Um, it, yeah, we, we need to be spiritually minded. That's another reason why it's good to have the Holy Spirit. Let's get that. Um, let's go to Romans. Look at Romans chapter eight. Let's go to verse six. 
Yeah. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life. Okay? And peace. Shalom. Yeah. Life and peace. So this is which, which is one of the gifts. Yeah. Um, so for sure, we need to be interested in the Holy Spirit. For sure, we need to be observing the Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, because it's all about that. It's all about that. All right. Um, let's, let's get some of the fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. Why we should be interested in the Spirit? Well, because it comes bearing fruits. Yeah. Fruits. Uh, and there's many gifts of the Spirit as well. But let's get some of these fruits. All right. Galatians chapter 5. Let's go to verse uh, 22. But the spirit of the but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, which, which means patience, gentleness, goodness, faith. It helps with all of this. It helps with all of this. You see, you see that. Let's go to the next verse, verse twenty-three. Meekness, temperance. Yes, that's moderation, balance. Yeah, against such, there is no law. Yeah, there's no law against these things. All right, all praises. All right, so this is why we need to be we need to be interested. The Pentecost is a celebration of all of this. Yeah, it's a celebration of all of this. All right, um, and as I say, it's um, it's 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 all part and parcel of the new covenant. Remember, in the new covenant and. I'm not going to lay the point on this particular video, but it was all about a, 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 the new covenant, which is made unto Israel. Right? He said, um, I'm going to put my law in your hearts. Well, well, how? Through the agency of the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. That's why, let's, 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 you know, let's get some of that. Let's go to um, John. Yeah. John chapter, uh, let's go, 14. Yeah. Let's go to verse 26, all right? So many more scriptures, but I'm, I'm so conscious of time uh, in making some of these videos. So John chapter 14, verse 26, and we can, do, we can do other videos. John 14, 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, read this already, he shall teach you all things. Well, that's, that's part of the new covenant. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I've said unto you. So. We were told that in the new covenant, no man will need to will, will need to take come to the Lord because you, you because you will. But this is part and parcel of that, right? And it can be broken down further. But we see that, all right. Let's let's look at this another way. Let's go to Romans, yeah. The feast of Pentecost, right, is a celebration of the new covenant as well. All right. Do you know? Um, there's many a scholar. Will tell you who will hold fast to the, to the belief that the when the Ten Commandments were given, it was on the very day of the Feast of Weeks, you know. And I've and I've, I've yeah, and I've read around that, I looked into it, very compelling. All right? Is it so far fetched to think, well, seeing as the first, if the first covenant, yeah, if the old covenant was given, is it so um, um, really stretching? Um, our thought processes to conceive of the idea that actually the new covenant is also pictured by the day of Pentecost. All right. Um, so Romans 5, 5 and, and hope make us not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Remember the new, the new covenant was all about putting the law in our hearts. And here in Romans 5, 5, we're being told and hope make us not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad. Not will be, you know, not future, but at this time. Yeah, is shed abroad in our hearts. Yeah, by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Do you see that? Yeah, he said, "I'll put my law in your in your heart." Well, what, what, what's what's the law? What's what's the law? Yeah, what's what, what is it? Yeah, the keeping of the commandments. Yeah, so, so, uh, yeah. To lo how do you love God? By keeping his commandments. We know that from 1 John, don't we? Yeah? 
um, chapter five. Yeah, so we know that, and and and, and Second John as well, verse six. Yeah, so we know that the love of God is to keep His commandments, and that's why we're told if, even Yahushua said, you know, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yeah, you know, if you love me, obey me. It's one thing to say you love you love Him. Yeah, but that could just be lip service. It's easy to say I love Him. That's just words out of a mouth. Yeah, but to demonstrate you love Him. Yeah, that's the love from the heart. How do you do that? That's obedience. Yeah, that's yeah. That's that's following through with your very actions and behavior. Otherwise, it's just lip service, which is why some get told, some will be told, we'll call him Lord, lip service, Lord, Lord, lip service. But then many will be told, you know, get away from me. I never knew you. You workers of iniquity. What's iniquity? It's the product of sin. What is sin? To, to break the law. First John chapter three, verse four. But anyway, um, so much we could say going down there, all right? But and hope makers not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. That's the fulfillment of the new covenant. The love of God, you see, if the love of God has been put in your heart, guess what? You're going to want to keep His commandments. And I know there might be some thinking, well, yeah, but we still don't know everything. We've been told that we'd be taught everything. That's the point. It doesn't necessarily, you know, it's, it's, it's also a process and an, and an unfolding as well, right? But that's, um, let me just quickly go over to First John as the Spirit leads. First John, yeah, First John uh, chapter 2, because I'm aware that a lot of people, a lot of our brothers and sisters have been taught that we're not in a new covenant, okay? Um, and the, like I say, probably have to do a complete video on that separately uh, and bring that out even more, all right? But um, I can't touch on Pentecost without bringing some of this out. So first, John, please, it's not, I'm not, let the Spirit, yeah, guide, the Holy Spirit guide. First John, chapter 2, verse 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. This is the new covenant being fulfilled. We're in the new covenant, brothers and sisters. Yes, what Yahawashai had accomplished was that significant. Do we think that he came, sacrificed himself as the Passover lamb, and yeah, died, was resurrected, and then victorious over, over death and over the enemy? Yeah, all powers made subject unto him now, all power and principality. Yeah, but we but we don't believe that what he did was enough to usher us into the new covenant. As though it wasn't enough, as though there's still something outstanding. No, he said, drink the blood, remember the blood, remember, remember the wine, which was symbolic of the blood, a similitude for the blood, drink, yeah. The blood of the new covenant is what he said at the Passover table. That's another, it's, it's, I, it's another study in and of itself, all right? I appreciate that. But as the Spirit leads, yeah? The Pentecost is a celebration of this. It's a celebration of the outpouring of the Spirit, which makes it a celebration of the new covenant. We are in the new covenant. And all praises to the Most High God of Israel that we are in the new covenant, because it means we now have power to do the right thing. Not of ourselves, but through Yahweh Shai. Remember, we can do all things through Yahweh Shai who strengthens us. We know that from the book of Philippians. All right. All praises. Um, okay. Let's, um, let's, uh, let's, let's have a look. Let's, it's, a pure, it's a spirit of power. Yeah. It's a spirit of power. So we really need to get to grips with that. Yeah. Because we need that power in these last days. All right, let's get some of that. Let's go to Second Timothy. Yeah, let's get these scriptures out. Second Timothy chapter one, okay, and verse seven. Okay. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. All praises to Yahweh. Yeah. And praises to him for sending Yahweh Shaya Mashaya to save us from our sins, our enemies, and all who hate us, all praises as is written in scriptures. 
And again, that's what we're all about here at Israel Awake. Yeah, not man's opinion, not the precepts of men, not people's feelings and emotions. Yeah, that those are fine in as much as they resonate and tally and, and fall in line with the revealed word of the Most High. Yeah, but if anybody's thoughts, opinions doesn't feed in to the established word of the Most High, then, then, then we simply cannot accept that. All right. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Yeah. So this is what you get with the Holy Spirit. And this is what the day of Pentecost is all about. The outpouring of, of, of said spirits, all praises. All right. So what's not to observe? What's not to celebrate? Yeah. So it's a spirit. It's a powerful spirit. Um, let me go over to, just to bring this out even more, let's go to Romans chapter 15 and verse 13. You have to believe, yeah. The Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. You see that? We are empowered with the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, it's so clear to see, isn't it? Let's go to Acts. Acts chapter 1, yeah, and verse 8. Let's take a look here. Okay, Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. It's a spirit of power. Yeah, we've been empowered, Israel. Right, we've been empowered all praises. That's why we're supposed to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Right? That's from Ephesians 6 and verse 10. All right? I'm not necessarily going to go there now, but Ephesians 6 and verse 10. Um, I will go to um, Luke. Let's go to Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. All right? Look here again on screen. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Yeah, we've been empowered. Pentecost is a great day. All the holy days are great, all right? But this video is about the Feast of Weeks, yeah? The, the day of Pentecost, great day. Yeah, let's really, when you're observing it, really um, think about, everything that we're discussing here in this video, everything that we're, we're touching on in this video, all right? All praises to the Most High, okay? So much more, so much more, all right? This is why we are temples. We, do, do you know where the temples? That's because we're, we're, we're the new covenant temples. Housing the Holy Spirit, all right? Let's get out. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. All right, First Corinthians, uh, chapter three. All right, uh, yeah, let's go there first. Uh, three, yeah, let's go to verse sixteen. All right, First Corinthians, chapter three, verse sixteen. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Viewer, know ye not that ye are the temple of God? And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. This is what the day of Pentecost is all about. That's what we're observing. That's what we're marking. That's what we're celebrating. That's why it's a holy convocation on that day. All right. That's why. All right. Let's go further still. Let's go to, um, let me go to um, First Corinthians. Let's go to chapter six. Yeah, and verse 19. Because if we miss it in chapter three, we buck up uh, against it again in chapter six. All right. First Corinthians chapter six, verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Making it clear that this isn't future tense. It's present. If you love 
Yahweh, you will desire to obey him. Which means you have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Because the flesh by itself will never come to that conclusion by its own. The flesh will never come to its own conclusion that it wants to obey the laws, statutes, and commandments. The flesh is anti that. It's the Holy Spirit that makes you want to do these things, want to be subject to the sovereignty of Yahweh and of Yahweh Shaya Mashaya. And if you have that omnibuilding presence, you are a party to the new covenant. Present tense, not future tense. I've heard a lot of the arguments as to why people believe that we're not. Some people believe that we're not yet. I, 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 I disagree with that position based on scriptures. All right, Based on scriptures when you bring them all together. All right. Uh, and like I say, I would welcome the dialogue with anybody who might, may be struggling with that. All right. So we see here very clearly, all right, very clearly that um, this is major. It's a great day. It's something that we should, um, that we should, you know, want to keep. Why would we not want to celebrate the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit, yeah, of the Most High's Holy Spirit? This is why it's so important that we get to grips with this, all right? Because how do we receive our instructions from our king, from Yahweh Shai, Hamashayak, Malak Nawa, our king? It's through the agency of the Holy Spirit, yeah? Let's get that. Let's go to the book of Acts, all right? And only a few more verses to go now before I conclude this video. So Acts, uh, let's go to chapter one. And let's go to verse two. So here we go. Acts chapter one, verse two. Until the day in which he was taken up, Christ taken up. After that, he went through the, after that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. All right. Um, I want you to see that more clearly in context, right? So let me just get the whole of Acts chapter one up, all right? The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, yeah? So to all the teachings until the day he was taken up. After that, he, after that, so after he'd been taken up, how did he communicate with the apostles? After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. So before he was taken up, he was in person, incarnate, in the flesh. Could literally have, a, a, if you like, a man-to-man -man conversation with the apostles. After he got taken up, he wasn't in that form anymore to do that. That was not the form of choice anymore. This time it was being done through the agency of the Holy Spirit, which is how he deals with us today. We're celebrating this dynamic, this relationship on the day of Pentecost, on the Feast of Weeks. It's a major, 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 major um, holy time, holy day. All right. So this is why it was so important um, to, um, um, you know, repent and be baptized. That's why, you know, John the Baptist would say, uh, repent and be baptized, repent and be baptized. And again, we see that link between water and spirit, like I was saying earlier on at the outset of this video, all right? Because John's baptism was a water baptism, yeah? But he, as we know, it was a type. It was a picture of the full, the fulfillment of that, of that, which is actually the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, again, in keeping with the new covenant, all right? So the water being symbolic of the, of the spirit, See that? Um, so, so important, so integral, right? So integral. Um, let me stop the share here. Uh, I think there's a, a, hopefully that's been of interest. Hopefully that will help maybe fill in some of the gaps and hopefully get some people thinking, yeah? Maybe challenging a few uh, cherished beliefs and, and traditions 
uh, regarding this, but from you know from a from a scriptural uh, perspective. All right. So um, I'm really glad that time has come to to do this video. All right. If you want to know more about it, um, please do get in contact. All right. Please do get in contact with us uh, at Israel Away. But you know, don't take my word for it. Do your do your own research. Do your own reading. Obviously, study to show yourself approved. Think about it. Pray about it. All right. Um, yeah, it's a commandment. We're told to have a holy convocation, which is a solemn assembly, which is when God's people, when there's two or more gather. Yeah. So if you're if you're by yourself, you don't know anybody, you're, you're isolated, you're the only one waking up to this 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 truth. All right. Then you know, do what you can. But um, you know, I, I I'd like to say that you know you don't have to be doing this alone. But in fact, we're commanded not to. If you have access to anybody else, viewer, you do. You do. Yeah. Um, we'd be more than happy. So for you to join our holy convocation, if needs be, um, you know, at, at, at whenever it's good for you, um, when you when you feel prompted and led by the Holy Spirit, to, all right. So I just want to, you know, or, or, or of course you choose whatever, um, you know, gathering you'd like to join. Obviously, all right. I'm just making um, making ourselves available and, and and you know welcoming you. Um, should you should you require that? Yeah. Should you feel the prompting? All right. So think about it, pray about it, all right? Um, it's always the, the thing to do, always check in with the Most High, yeah, check in with him, all right? He'll always guide, he'll always show you the way, all right? Um, so I, I really do encourage that. If you would like um, some more information or would just like to contact us, right, then please do. Um, I'm actually, also I'm trying to get this, slide to change but it doesn't seem to be changing but um in any case do um contact us on but you can contact us by email all right um you can send a leave a comment on on the youtube if you wish all right but you can contact us by israel that's israel awaken seven at gmail.com okay so israel awaken and then the digit number seven so not the word seven but the digit number seven Israel awaken seven, all right, all one word at gmail.com. All right. Uh, so send us an email if you need to, uh, anything at all, any questions, or you want to learn more about us, maybe about, you know, um, getting joined, you know, joining us for holy convocation, whatever the case may be, just might be for questions, a few queries, yeah, whatever it is. Um, you, you want to debate something, whatever it is, let us know and then we'll take it from there. All right, because that's that's what it's all about. So um, excellent. Um, if this, please like and subscribe as well. All right. Um, if you feel prompted to, that would be great. Um, and that way, any future videos, um, you know, make sure that you you get you receive a notification on that. So do click on all notifications as well to make sure that you're receiving um, all notifications. All right. So great. Excellent. I think that's all that needs to be said on this. All right. So again, excellent. Um, I'm asking the Father to guide and protect you and yours. Yeah. Uh, and to bless you. All right. Um, and um, I hope you got a lot out of this video. So all praises, all praises. Yeah. In your Shai's holy name. Amen. And uh, hope to see you on a future video.